A trend which has followed sports enthusiasm in Africa is the spate of sports betting. It seems that overnight, betting houses have sprung up on virtually every street of every major town. In Lagos, the trend is catching on like never before. As fancy betting houses are set up, sports pundits, especially soccer fans, are filing out in droves to place their bet on their favorite teams and league tournaments. To a non-sport enthusiast, this probably does not add up. However, this episode avails us with a deeper understanding as to why new investors are taking the plunge into the betting business. So stick with me as we explore this still raging wave of business betting on Africa. I'm James Lyade and you're watching Channel Discovery. Till I see my number enter. Economic implications of sports betting could be mind-boggling. An investigation carried out by the news agency of Nigeria not long ago reveals that about 60 million Nigerians between 18 and 40 years of age may be spending up to 1.8 billion naira on sport betting daily. In the spirit of the theme, I chose to meet Moses Praise a seasoned sports analyst at the Premiership Suites to look into how football fanaticism is beginning to take new commercial turns in Africa. How would you qualify sports enthusiasm and its trend to be big business here in Africa? Well, you can't go wrong with sports, um, as it seems. Uh, it's one of the most powerful unifying factor. And beyond that, if you harness its potential, uh, the finances out of it is absolutely ridiculous, I will tell you that. And that's why those who are in the business of sports are, are those who basically are holding majorly some of the economies of the world. And um, I think it's a big deal until we, we haven't come to that uh, resolution in this part, which is actually sad. And until we do that, uh, I feel we'll still be admiring what's going on in uh, develop, developed worlds and uh, how they have harnessed the power of sports. But take nothing away from it, sports is, still remains the only unifying factor. You know, because it doesn't matter where you're from, I don't care who it is bombing anywhere. If there's a sports going on, everybody say, you know what guys, let's stop bombing at least for today <laughs> and catch what's going on. Right. Uh, so the enthusiasm is massive. In your own personal humble opinion, does sport bring more people to betting houses or do betting houses bring more people to sport? I think betting houses should be happy because of sports. I mean, at the end of the day, what you want to place bet on anyway. So sports has taken more people to betting houses now because is, they've seen an opportunity uh, for them to make money. For some people, they are perennial gamblers. So I think it's for the sports, basically. Because I'll, I'll tell you a story. I was, on, um, I was traveling with a friend of mine with my colleagues, we're going for a production in a lorry, and um, they were more or less tracking, you know, scores that was coming up. So I thought, yeah, like the normal thing I would do, like track. Hey, man, I mean, look at these guys. These guys are trailing, you know, and stuff. Why are they playing like this, you know? And they were taking it very serious. They were very emotional. And I'm like, what is wrong with this dude? I mean, come on, it's a game. They play today, tomorrow, yeah. they'll get the scores, they'll, whatever result they need to get. I said, bros, you don't understand. So it's, so somebody now say, he don't bet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't know that. You know, so it's how serious he takes it. Because he was saying uh, last month, he made, he made 180,000. I'm like, what? So yeah. So I'm thinking, if you made 180,000, how much did you place for bets? Said 100 naira. Like, <laughs> 100 naira. 100 naira. 100 naira. 100 wow. naira. I'm like, it's crazy. People are seeing opportunity fall as low as 50 naira. They could make as high as 100,000, depending on the odds you placed on. So it's, it's, I think the betting company itself needs sports because they're realizing how big uh, a money spin it is for them. But now, 
Sports is taking people to the betting company. I mean, it's a case where you see some places where the, the, where the vendors are packed, fully packed. Why? Because now people are saying, opportunity. Oh, I can actually make a quick box here. I can make quick money here. So it, it's, I think it's both ways. But most importantly, for now, it's sports that is taking people to the betting houses. All right, Mr. Moses Praise, thank you very much for your time, sir. It's been my pleasure. And speaking about sports and betting, I think I'm about to win this game and take all your money. You got four red balls, I got two. But so it's let my goal, right? It is my play now. <laughs> so I don't my know how much you're wagering on this one, but um, I think I'll take your money. Let's see. One more ball to go. Two more, actually. <laughs> I oh, found it. Not bad. So is it my go now? It is yours. And you got two shots, as a matter of fact. In my quest to know more about how this game of chance plays out in Nigeria, we seek out one of the first indigenous betting nice. companies to find out about the industry, the players, and most importantly, how to place a bet that wins. Tell us a bit about your betting house, Naira Bet. Well, um, Naira Bet is all about placing money on sports teams all around the world. You, a lot of people argue about people follow their football teams passionately, sure. but this is all about putting your money on the teams that you feel is going to win or draw or lose. And once that happens at the end of the day, you cash your money. It's a very, very simple concept. What prompted your interest to get into this business in the first place? I was visiting the United Kingdom about seven years ago, and um, a friend I went to visit um, actually took me to one of the UK sports betting houses. And I loved it. It's a very simple concept. It was a no-brainer. And I said to myself, I'm not just I'm going to love this. And here we are today. <laughs> Could you kindly take us through the basic process of how one is to place a bet on games here at Naira Bet? Well, it depends. Um, there are basically two ways. Through the internet, or if you walk into any of our outlets like this one we okay. are here right now. Um, if you go on the internet, you go to our website www.narabet.com and register for free. Then you fund your account. That will go into any of our outlets or using your card or right. your debit card online. Um, they start placing your bets and once you win your games, you can that's where you withdraw into your bank account. That, but if you want to come to our outlets, all you need to do is walk into our outlet, look at the board where the matches are listed, write down uh, the games you want to bet on, hand it over to the cashier, hand over your money as well. The cashier issues you a receipt, you go pray for luck. <laughs> when, when, when your bet comes through, you come back to the same cashier, give the cashier your receipt, the cashier validates it on the system and pay your money right away. So it's pretty straightforward. Simple. Very, very straightforward. How do you enlist agents? Is there a process to secure players' interest, for example? Oh, when we're talking about agents, just like any serious business that is seeking expansion, we we have a program for giving out franchises, like we call them agents, where people can invest in a brand, open up their own outlet, using the Narabet brand name, take bets from the public on behalf of Narabet, and we split the profits in the process. So we have a process whereby People call our customer service department mm -hmm. for coming to any of our shops and say they want to become agents. And all we need to do is to go over to the location they want to use, um, make sure it's suitable for sports betting. And uh, once we verify that, we install our software into their systems and they can start taking the bets on behalf of, on behalf of NaraBet and they get rewarded at the end of it more equally whatever comes in through their sports betting agency. But NaraBet is actually responsible for the payments. Sure. Okay, so the players' interests are protected so that we just don't have a charlatan come right, in right. and start up a Nairabet shop and runs away with the entire money that it comes. So anywhere anybody says the Nairabet brand name is backed up from the head office so everyone is secured because we are licensed definitely. Sure. So everyone is secured. So anywhere you see the Nairabet signage, have the confidence to go into the, uh, to go into the premises and place your bets. What are some of the different products and games available here at Nairabet for its customers? Oh, number one, the most popular is football games in Europe, especially okay. the English Premier League. People love betting on Chelsea, Arsenal, Man United, and all these teams. The top tier yeah, teams. The top teams. People love betting on them and other European teams as well. But well, apart from football, apart from European leagues, all other sport you can get on Arabic. 
basketball, tennis, uh, US golf, US golf, golf <laughs> table tennis, swimming, wow. spilo, water darts, polo, water polo <laughs> netball, whatever is going on out there, it's available. Thousands of games every single day on our system. Evidently, Naira Bet is fast growing in the industry. Absolutely. What's the future? The future is up. It can only go up. The market is not yet saturated the way we have it in like the United Kingdom where it's hundreds of years old. But the pioneer in Nigeria is less than a decade old. So there's a lot of white spaces to cover. In a few years down, down the line, it's not going to be like this. We have a lot of investors knocking in, wanting to invest in existing business, wanting to set up new businesses, uh, new sports betting businesses. Because it's widely accepted in the sports betting community that the future is Africa, especially Nigeria. Betting is a game of numbers, and while the odds can be tricky too, it is not just as simple as, say, a flip of the coin, or is it? With a typical sport bet for a number of matches, we take the staking trip to a statistician to work out how the true odds of the person placing a bet in a given order can make a win. Doctor, how does betting on the odds truly work mathematically? Yeah, the, the major issue is that sports betting is what we refer to as gambling, and gambling is wagering. And wagering gives either a loss or a gain, or one remains at a status quo, which we call draw. And uh, in most cases, wagering uh, uses a lot of applied mathematics, which we call probability. And in probability, it falls under the ambit of what they call combinatorics. And that is why you see a lot of permutations and combinations in, in the game. Also, it depends on the particular spot betting because the outcomes are not just the same. So it, it varies from one spot betting to another. And that is why we say that the spot betting in most cases is highly unpredictable so it, because it's uh, always faced with uh, issues of uncertainty and variability. And that is where the concept of uh, statistical or mathematical analysis comes into play because we have to understand the concepts and the principle that underline each game. Is there a systematic statistical process to winning in sports betting? Many gamblers have tried to come out with uh, strategies of winning. They have also propounded a lot of uh, theories on that, but we realize that in most cases, the, in the short run, it works, but in the long run, you realize that it doesn't work quite long. For example, if you look at the so-called uh, Babi Jebu, which is also uh, spot betting, they say, this is, uh, the, the frequency is much, they go as much as four times in a, in a day. So the people look at it as, oh, it's another way of uh, the so-called ajo, the, uh, what we call a susu in Igbo land. So they now feel, ah, the, 10, uh, the 100 naira, 50 naira doesn't make this thing. They can also, this thing. So the, what I'm trying to say is that uh, the, all the theories and all these things didn't work out that way because it involves more advanced mathematical procedures. So from what I gather, if you were to go into sports betting, you'd be a billionaire because you seem to have cracked the formula here. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's a, that's a mathematical... A theory. theory. No, this, uh, this, uh, the, the formula you see here is even for more serious uh, uh, real-life situations, just like stock, bonds, shares, they're all... <laughs> the same, they fall within the same categories. Because if you look at the bonds, you look at the, the stocks, the risk. everything is a risk. They are all speculative risk. And the people who are involved are speculators. Just like those other people in that other side are also speculators. If there is a tendency that the, the, the things, the odds favors the betters, you see that they, they will automatically have to go. <laughs> because they will have to go bankrupt. So that is why they themselves are all even in a more difficult situation. So that is why the, the game is more of a speculative risk. Nobody can say of sure 
what the pattern might look like. I think I'm still going to copy the formula regardless. <laughs> Dr. Aguibo, yeah, thank you very much for pleasure. your time, sir. It's a pleasure, sir. Continual choice sporting activities, an enabling environment, and the infrastructural facilities being set in place, it's only a matter of time before the foreign giants begin flocking in to bet on the Africans. A manifestation of this can be seen in the arrival of UBC 365, one of the first organizations to birth in Sub-Sahara Africa. What is the history of UBC 365? Well, uh, UBC 365 is an international company that's been in the market for more than five years. Well, moreover, we uh, came to Nigeria like two years ago, and our target is to satisfy our uh, Nigerian community. You have a very impressive state-of-the-art facility, like we're standing in right now, the VIP room. What other things make you stand out amongst your competition? Well, as you just stated, our VIP lounge is one of the most popular or which differentiates us from all our competitors. We have a VIP lounge that we're standing in right now that anybody can come in and play and be treated as a VIP. We have high odds. Uh, we pay prompt payments on time and many other things that you can find on our website and on our Facebook page. Could you please shed some light on some of the various services that you run here? Well, as it's known, we are a sports betting company. Moreover, we have virtual in most of our shops. Our customers can bet online on our website. Please uh, note that it is www.ubc365.ng. What is your operational principle? Well, as any company that's uh, target is to satisfy uh, its customer, you have to have a basic operation which is made of different departments such as sales and marketing, HR, legal department, and the most important department in our company is customer service because the customer is always right in our company. Even if they lose? Even if they lose, they are always welcome to play again and again. again. It's, it's a matter of luck. Of course. So. How do you ensure a fair playing ground and that winners actually get their winnings? As you can read it on our various social media, such as Facebook, website, uh, we pay always on time. So a person can come at any time, play at our shops, at our agent's shop, and he can ask for his win winning the moment he sees on the ticket that he won. And we wish all that our customers can come and try and to see how we pay prompt, pay prompt payments or winnings on time. Judging from what you've put up here, you've made quite an investment. How yeah. rewarding has it been so far? Well, uh, to be honest, nobody opens any business not to be rewarded. But now our major concern is to reward and to satisfy our customer. Then after we satisfy the majority of the Nigerian people, then comes to reward ourselves. We will be rewarded from their reward. This is the most important. Do you hope to be in this business for as long as it lasts and what are the future projections for the company? Well, we are looking for a brighter future. So if my opinion is we will have a brighter future, so it's sure we'll be in the market for as long as we can. And as I said, and I will repeat it again, we'll be here for, to get more agents, to, uh, to grow in all Nigeria and to satisfy our customers as much as we can. All right. Okay. Mrs. Marian Akiki Ohanesian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your Appreciate time, it. and we are the most thank welcome. You. To meet world lottery standards and be as successful as other regulatory bodies in Africa, that is the mantra of the Lagos State Lottery Board. So I decided to come aboard the agency's activities to find out how it goes about achieving this avowed objective in and around the bustling metropolis of Lagos. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How's everything? Very good. Thanks for having me today. You're welcome. It's great to see you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. The lottery board came into place in 2004. Correct. What was the story like before then, and how have things been since you guys came into existence? Yeah, it's a great story, I must say, because um, we've made a lot of uh, thrive in uh, 
where it was before. It was a very, very unregulated, uh, informal sector. But uh, the business of the day was free for all, so to speak. Uh, and uh, once uh, the board was established and the law came into place, uh, we've changed all that. And, um, and uh, here we are today, from small beginnings to where we are now. So, Excellent. Yeah. Why regulate betting and lottery activities in the first place? It needs to be regulated uh, because if it's not regulated, it's going to be a, you know business as usual. There will be uh, revenues that comes from there won't be used properly. You know, like the revenues we generate for the state is being used for uh, what we call good causes. Uh, what do we mean by good causes are that several, there are four sectors in Lagos State economy that the that the funds are diverted to that health, uh, infrastructure, education, and environment. So those four aspects, the funds that we generate, goes into those sectors for us to be able to um, improve on all those sectors and also get a benefit so that the Lagosians can see the benefit from that as well. Is there a big queue or backlog with companies trying to register more newer betting shops? We've been overwhelmed at the board. We keep getting applications. But we believe that we also have a responsibility as a regulator, you know, not to saturate the industry so that the um, operators, the present operators, the they standards. can recoup they can recoup their investments yeah. so they can um, you know have time to see what the industry environment is. We're trying to cap it but we, we are not at the moment high, um, getting more operators in, you know, for now. For now. For now, yeah. What are some of the challenges you face in carrying out your regulatory work? We have quite a few challenges. Uh, the challenges are obviously with the operators trying to be smart, you know, the ones that are uh, legally um, or licensed. And then we also have the illegal ones trying to be, to do the illegal stuff, not coming to meet us for regularization of their operations. And uh, we are up to that. Like I said earlier, we have a monitoring and enforcement unit uh, that monitors the activities in Lagos State. <clears throat> They're out there on the field. We enforce in conjunction with the uh, special task force from the governor's office in Alausa. And uh, those are the few challenges uh, we're having when it comes to uh, the regulatory aspects of, uh, of the state. With the flurry of activities at the Lagos State Lottery Board, it is obvious that betting is a thriving business. And with Mr. Bajabi Amila being the new sheriff in town, I decided to take a trip to see how he keeps the bookmakers and the town in order. We arrived at Ojuelegba, a historical beehive of commercial activities in Lagos, to inspect the conduct at Bet Naija another new generation betting house. So what do you want to do today? You want me to show you around? If possible. Yeah? Okay, all right. Let me uh, make one or two calls and then I'll show you around. Great. Is that okay? Perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Out of that training room. If you wanted to be a, a part of what we do, uh, we have a, a structured induction process where you have to come through, and part of that you have to go through a uh, training, so this is our training room. And as you can see, we already have people in training at the moment. So that's our training room. Okay. Okay. Department is what you call inspection. So when you make an application to become our agent, uh, they will typically go out there to check your location in terms of size, in terms of proximity, proximity and be suitable for, for, for what you consider as the adequate minimum shop size to become our agent. So a lot of the guys that come here today probably have come to progress their application to become an agent. One of the cocktail of products that we offer our customers is the ability to 
to take bet on virtual game. That could be greyhound, that could be horse racing, it could be virtual football, it could be uh, numbers game. And this is the technical thing that couples that component together and also support, uh, support that network of uh, those agents that particularly like to have those products in their shop. So this is a, their focal point where they come for support technical or any other matters relating to virtual. It is quite revealing at Bet Niger how much patronage betting is gathering amongst the locals. And business people see opportunities of being agents to actual players. I guess sustenance is all about putting the right structures in place. One thing this new industry seems to be taking seriously. So, th okay, this is great. This is great. Yeah, well, I guess so uh, this, com that, this completes your yeah. process, the application process. Sure. Yeah. This was the last thing that was outstanding okay. with them. So we've We've now completed that and uh, I think um, they're more or less um, good to go fully 100% now. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you very I much. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. All really the best. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So we'll be seeing you again. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Life is a whole gamble, some would say. However, with continual choice sporting activities, an enabling buoyant environment, and all the required infrastructural facilities in place, when it comes to the future of sports betting, it all boils down to the number one thing. And that is, does it make a business for the player, the investors, and of course, the government? It seems quite early in the day to see just how big the overall business will become on the African continent. What is clearly evident is that if it continues to make money, it would indeed make sense to punters. And that, you can bet. I'm James Laherty, and until next episode on Channel Discovery, take care and goodbye for now.